Hello, 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 Countsake here, back with another Unity Craft Theory Shortest Path Solver thing. I can never remember the name of this thing. Anyway, but yeah, let's just say that I really just had like some explosion in my mind, or maybe not an explosion, but whatever. I just had something pop up in my mind, and I'm, sud and I'm suddenly like, oh my gosh, maybe this could work. And well... Obviously, it's probably not a very, it probably doesn't sound very clear as to what I mean. So it's a bit difficult to explain. It kind of started off with this. Um, basically, I wanted to check, I was, I, was, I was remembering that like, that technically, I, what I wanted to do was like, to pick a random, a random vertex, and then kind of just path out from there. But however, I noticed that I wanted to, because I wanted to build subgraphs based on the parts that you could and could not go to, I realized that, hey, if I start from B in this graph and go to E, D, E, and then spread like so, it will actually say that this is an entire graph. However, if we start from A, it will be the opposite. It will only contain A, E, D, F, and I. It will not contain B or C. This is because um, this is a directional edge. And if and we can't go to from E to B because it does because this is only a one way, so that's why I have this crossed out arrow here. So what I happened to, what I happened to realize is that well, the only way that this can be considered one single graph is if well you can return back to B, and that basically what this basically says if. If there is a cycle that can that where you can go along this path, go to start from this vertex, and then go off and somehow end up back at B, does whatever, it doesn't matter. Basically, oh whoops. Basically, if we have some sort of let's say we have some sort of path. So we start from from path, and this path goes from B then it goes to then it goes to e and then whatever path it may lead to if the last one is b if it is b we can therefore say that this this is all one single graph um but uh, if not if this is not b then what we can actually say is that B is not a part of this other whole entire section here. Excuse me. This is a very, I don't know why, it took it took me quite a while. I, I'm not sure why, but at the same time, while also figuring this out, I also have a feeling that this can actually, um, this can actually do something. I like, it can actually lead me to somewhere. However, I'm not sure if I will need this list subgraphs um, kind of function. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be needing 10 million lists of vertices. So, <laughs> yeah, um, actually, I don't believe... I'm not sure if I would like to... I'm not sure if I should do this. But if anything, I'll, I'll first start it off like this. We're gonna first what we're first gonna do is make a list of one vertice of vertices vertices. This is going to be the passed over passed over vertices. And this is going to be obviously equal to a new list of vertex. Then what we ne next is what we need is a list of the vertex, which are the the connected vertices equal to a new list of verte vertices. Now, it might be wondering why on earth do we need so many lists? And well, I'm, I actually have like, I, I went on to Notepad and I just kind of just typed a bunch of stuff. But hopefully, I hope this works. I really do hope that this works. Oh my gosh. So, and then what we have to do again is, since we actually technically do have a starting a starting uh, vertex. What we do technically need to do is make a list of edges of edge, which is going to be the starting edge, starting edges equal to a 
this is going to be equal to the get connected edges from um, ver um, this goes from path solve dot vertex points zero. And well, and what we have to do here is after we do that, well, in a sense, what we have to do is do is say past over vertices is equal to a is dot add and we pass in our start it our path solve dot vertex points zero. Now in a sense, what we have to do now um, what we have to do now is kind of uh, we have to do something. Right? Now we actually need to set the connected vertices. Dot. We need to add path solve dot vertex points zero to this to this um, again. We need to do this again. And basically, this is a bunch of preparations. This is a bunch of preparations. So I might as well say this is the um, the in the preparation preparations for or the uh, salt for the, I'm not sure what to call it, but if anything, it's kind of like making, I don't, I don't know what it's saying. Uh, never mind. I'm just, I'm not going to say, I'm just going to go ahead and work. I'm going to leave this here, but I'm just, yeah. But since, like I said, I'm not sure this is 100% that this is going to work. However, it does have a very, a lot of potential that I believe could actually work. So I'm gonna, I, I said that I really dislike the while loop. However, I do believe it has potential. In this case, what we're going to do is do while connected vertices dot count is greater than zero. And within this, we're going to have a list, another list of vertices, and we're gonna call this the new, new connected vertices. And this is obviously going to be equal to a new list of vertex. Now you might be wondering, what the heck? Now this is the reason why is because what we have to do now is to go. What we have to do now is for each for each um what what we have to do is for each um vertex we're going to call this underscore v in connected vertices. What we have to do now is um, we have to make a list of edge of edge. We're going to call this underscore e, not underscore three, underscore e, a list of edge, and this is going to be to get connected edges to underscore v. Actually, hold on a second. We don't need this thing. Now that I think about it, we probably don't need this. All we need to do is to add it over to this guy. We, all we need to do is to add it to this because technically, um, yeah. So what we have to do is if we make a list of edges that is, we make a list of edges that are connected to this guy. And now once we do that, we have to do if, oh yeah, actually we have to do a another for each. There's, yes, there's going to be a lot of loops in this. For each edge, um, Let's go to the edges. We're going to call it like that. Uh, for each edge, underscore E in, underscore V edges, what we have to do here now is if, if, um, underscore E dot P1 is equal to underscore V, well, what we have to do now is we have to do some, we have to actually do some other things first. So, under this, what we have to do here is if, um, oh my gosh, underscore v, if underscore e dot p2, yes, p2, oh wait, no, what we have to do is if past over vertices dot contains, we have to do underscore e dot p2 because well, this one is already supposed to be a connected verti vertice, and it should be already in the passed over vertices. Then, oh, okay, I might, I might as well make this very clear about what, if this is equal to false, 
if this is false, then what we have to do now is do connected vertices dot add uh, no new connected vertices new connected vertices dot add underscore uh, no underscore e dot p two. Then we also have to do what we have to do here now is do path um, past over vertices dot add underscore e dot p two. Yes, this is this is really 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 this is a really huge it's quite a lot of stuff. And well, after we do that, we have to now check else if underscore e dot p p two is equal to underscore v. But we also need to make sure. Well, however, this is a bit of a difference. Um, I have it such that whoops, I have it such that in our code, um. We have two points. We have the p. We have we have p. We have p one. This, and then we have p two. Now the difference between this is that if we have a vertex p one and we have a vertex p two, the edge specifically goes from p one to p two. So this is what, how our direction works. It actually goes in this direction. It does not go in this direction, which is why um, how, if we want to get a connected edge to this, to if we want to get a connected vertex and we want to be able to pass along this path, we need to make sure that, um, we need to make sure that if we're on this point here, we need to make sure that it's not directional, so that way we can actually go from P1, from P2 to P1. Because if it's directional, it's impossible to go this way. Because, like as I stated in my code, it, you go from P1 to P2. It is never the other way around. So yeah, that is that's actually how I have it in my code. So therefore, we also need to say and underscore e dot directional is equal to false. That's right. And if it's false, then we have to then we have to do is do new connected vertices dot add underscore e dot e one p one uh, yeah point one. Then we have to do a new underscore curve and then again add underscore e dot p one. Oh my gosh! Okay, I'm just okay. I'm just kind of making some okay. Um, I'm kind of also realizing that this might not actually work for Dijkstra's algorithm. You know why? Because um, I was saying that you're gonna gonna you're going to have to need uh, sort of like you kind of need to have a list. Of, you kind of do need to have all the previous floats associated that lead up to some. Point. Um, this technically, what this is doing is checking if there's a solution. Um, it doesn't make it so complicated. Dang it. Okay, I think I have an idea. So, in a sense, if we do go over to this vertex, if we do manage to go over to, if, so let's say, um, let's go, let's say that we actually, we have a, a value, let's say that technically the min, the, uh, so let's just say the minimum distance, the minimum distance of this one is equal to two. If this is three, then all we need to do for the new minimum distance of P2, this is equal to the MD sub one plus the edge e sub l, which I'm going to call the edge length, md sub 1, might as well indicate this md sub 2, and this is going to be e sub l. There we go. And with that, um, what we have to do now is get, what, 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 bleh, cannot speak. Can't speak. Oh no, I just realized. All right, all right. All right, I got you. This is not Dijkstra's algorithm. 
This is not Dijkstra's algorithm. This is a completely different algorithm. This is not Dijkstra's algorithm. So technically, what I'm doing here is wrong. I kind of could realize that because Dijkstra's algorithm is not done this way. Uh, it doesn't branch out from a single point. How it, how Dijkstra's algorithm is that you start from a vertex, then you branch out from there, but then you get the smallest, you get you go to the edge that with the smallest minimum distance, then you branch out from that new small from that from that new vertex. This is completely different. This one just branches out in all direct in, in whatever way it can. So technically, what this does is a solution checker. So I'm going to go ahead and My mic was muted. Okay. I hope I didn't just. I'm. I'm. I. I really hope my mic wasn't muted for a long time. Okay. Basically, I explained that um, we for for vertices you go from p1 to p2, and then well to actually get distances we actually need we all we just need to do is get the minimum distance from the previous vertex and then so on. And yeah, that's how we have to, that's actually how we're going to do it. That's how I'm going to do it, which is something I need to keep in mind for when I actually do work on Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra's algorithm actually, um, what I realize is that the this code is not actually what how Dijkstra's algorithm works. It's a completely different thing. All this does is an, al what this is is an algorithm to check for if there is a solution for between two points. What this checks is that there is a solution between two points. 
I actually started the one. I'm not sure. I started it off by assuming that you check a, get a random point and then yeah, you go all, all over the graph. And well, yeah. And well, I had, I finally had this idea. And well, hopefully, I was my mic wasn't muted the whole time and whatnot. Let me check my mic again if it is. And this is why I would like to see some UI where I can actually see if my mic is muted or not. Anyway, so let me go ahead. So after we clear the connected vertices, and when we have the, um, yeah, we have all this stuff. So what this does is we first have a start point. The start point is going to be passed over already because it's our start point. And then we also, and we're going to just set it that, hey, this is going to be our connected vertex, technically. And then what we're going to do now is while this when for as long as this list of vertices is actually actually has vertex vertices in it, we're going to do all of this code. And what all of this code does is that in our new connected vertices, what this does is gets a list of all the vertices that are from that come from a that from a single vertex. So let's say we start off from E. The new connected vertex, this is our connected vertex, the connected vertices um, list will have E in it. However, um, new connected vertices will get A and D. Well, it won't be able to get B because um, this is a one-way, one-way, one-way edge. But yeah, it basically what it what new connected edges does is it gets all the other uh, vertices that are connected to our point E here, or our, it gets all the connected edges. I mean, all the connected vertices for all the for all of the what is it for all of the vertices inside of connected vertices. Yeah, all the new connected vertices gets is a list of all the connected vertices to the vertices in connected vertices. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I know it's probably a... I probably should not call it connected vertices. I probably should call it instead uh, current vertices. Or the check... We're going to call this uh, the... Yeah, we're going to call this the current vertices. So what this... Okay, now hopefully this will make sense. Current vertices is a list of all the vertices that you may have branched off to. So we could have, let me go ahead and go to this one over here. So technically, if we started from uh, J, we could have branched off from K to N. So technically, if we start off with J, it would be, that would be our current vertex, but then after that, it would clear. And then now K and N are the new current vertices. The new connected edge, the new connected vertices are what they do is it goes from k and it goes to all it checks all edges and sees if we've already passed over it and if it hasn't it will add connected it will add that vertex to connected vertices to the new connected vertices i'm probably going to have to change to connected vertices so with that um yeah, and then it basically just loops in on itself until every single, hopefully every single vertex that it can cross over is done. Now, I have a feeling that I probably have, I have a feeling that I've actually messed up something, and I'm still, um, let me go ahead and also fix this, uh, the... This is going to be, instead of being called new connected vertices, it's going to be called connected vertices. And well, when we do that, we what we want to do is current vertices is now going to be set equal to connected vertices. Yes. And then after that, I'm just going to do connected vertices dot clear just to be sure because I'm not entirely, yeah, because once again, I'm not entirely sure. But once we manage to do that, if and whenever the current vertices count, is zero. What we will then do is return. We're going to return the state of past over vertices dot contains, and guess what? This obviously needs to contain the endpoint. And if it does not contain the endpoint, 
then, well, if it does not contain the endpoint, then this will return a false, meaning that there is no existing solution. And oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is so hard to, this is so hard for me to come up with. If it does not work, I swear, okay. What I'm going to do for now, what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to make this set to public. No, I'm not going to set it to public. I'm going to set it to private. I'm going to make a random public, a public void. And this one is going to be check for solution. This is going to, this is a temporary function. So what this is, what this is going to do is it's, We'll we'll do a notification dot notify. Okay, what we want to do here is um if we want to do a switch. We don't really need to do it if we don't really need to do a switch. Why not? We'll do a switch. So what we have to do here is. What it does is we'll get a boolean. This is going to be there is solution is equal to existing solution, and we'll do path solve dot vertex points zero, and then we'll do path solve dot vertex points one. And well, what I want to do is to do a debug. Okay, what well, I guess a debug dot log, just a debug dot log. There is solution. A solution. There is a so solution. There is a solution between that solve dot vertex points zero dot game object dot name and path solve dot vertex points one dot game object dot name is and we we're going what we're going to redo is return there there is solution and if this does not work if this ends up just exploding unity then well if it ends up crashing unity or whatever it may be i don't know i'm i'm just going to have to say that well i'm probably going to have to end the live stream if that's the case because i spent a lot of time on this okay anyway let's go ahead and Go ahead and add our solver algorithm to the to this, to this guy. So over here, over here, we're gonna do solve shortest path button, and then what we're gonna do is take um, the graph space and go to solver algorithm and um, check for solution. Um, just just as a quick save, I want to check. Um, if path solve the vertex points, okay, we have to, I'm just going to do a for each. Path solver, path solve dot vertex points for each vertex. V. Um, for each vertex point. If point, you know what, what am I doing? Or int i is equal to zero, while i is less than or equal to path solve dot vertex points dot length i plus plus. Um, if path solve dot 
vertex point, come on, vertex points i is equal to null, and we're going to return. This has a little safe, this has a little safe thing. We're going to want to save here because we never know if Unity is just going to explode. Well, obviously Unity, I hope Unity doesn't explode because that would be terrifying. And I'm, I'm going to just build a very, 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 very simple graph. And hopefully, hopefully it'll be able to check. So what I'm going to do here is edit this one to be a directional. And what I'm going to do now is go from A0. What, why is it? Okay. A2. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> oh my gosh, why are you like this? Okay. I'm afraid I'm just go okay. Just give me a second. My brain is kind of I'm kind of feel like I'm gonna Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and set this one to directional. Alright. Let's now go to solve mode. Let's go from oh no. no. Oh wait, we want to go from A to A1. Oh my gosh! Yes! It works! Oh my gosh, I'm so happy it works. Why is it str- okay. That, okay, that is bothering me. Why is it starting? Why is Path Solver just starting off at point? It's almost set up. It's set to zero. Oh, wait a second. Hold on a second. When we set up, move all points. Yeah, I think we need to do this. All right, so. Um, yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, so. I'm surprised that it actually even works. Oh my gosh. Yes. Let me go ahead now and just load up a let me load up a graph. So um let's do let's do our triangle. And basically uh, what we want to do now is to go to solve mode, go from C to B. And hopefully this will say true. It, okay. Okay. My soul totally, totally didn't just get destroyed right now. Okay, let me... Oh! That is a problem. Um, this is not supposed to be... Okay, this is supposed to be passed over vertices. Um, yeah, maybe that was the issue. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to check that again. Hopefully... We don't explode Unity again, and we're let's go make the simple simple solution again now, shall we? Um, and then we're gonna go edit this guy. We're gonna make it directional. We want to go to from A. No, we don't want to go from A one. We want to go from um, we want to go from A to A one. Okay. And we will continue, and it says it's false. Okay, good. 
I also realized I could probably make a, a huge shortcut here. Um, rather than having, rather than it doing like this, what we're going to do is, rather than going like this, we can do at the end of this, at the end, We can actually do like um, right here. If underscore e dot p two um, if underscore p e dot p two um, is equal to well if it equal if it equals to the end point. And we could we could just return a true I automatically. We could just return a true. Exactly. So and for here, if it's P1, then we can return a true automatically. There's it can shorten a huge amount of time. So yeah, with that, I'm pretty sure that my algorithm still works completely fine. Um, but I guess I might as well test it one more time doing the same exact setup. But you know what? I'm gonna make it a little different because uh i'm tired of i just i just want to make it look more cool all right so i'm going to make one from a4 to this guy mu t u u t u u t u and lastly u t u and basically what i want to do is to say that this guy is directional okay good so we're going to go ahead and solve for Gonna, let's say we start from A and we go from to A2. Let's go ahead and solve for this. It, it, yeah, this, there is no solution because it's impossible to get to it. All right, so now let's get rid of A. Let's now choose. Okay, if this one is unable to solve for itself, this should be true. Thank gosh. Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this one again, and we'll go to A0. And let's, um, this one should say false. It does, yeah, it does say false. And with that, yeah, it works very nicely. Let's go ahead and unlock our triangle here, and let's hopefully now, let's see that, hey, it works. So, so we're gonna go to C, from C to B, and hopefully, What? From C to B. From C to B. Is there something I'm missing here? This should be true. No, I'm not kidding. This should be true. Come on, come, come on, computer, please. What have I done? No, please. Why? Why are you like that? Okay, maybe I did this wrong. Um. Maybe I did something wrong with the algorithm. Okay, so, um, else if, okay, okay, if e dot p one is equal to this, then we're obviously going to be talking about p two here. P2 is refers to the endpoint. So if it's if we're on the endpoint, so we're starting at C and well from okay and from from C you can go to A. Uh, at least I think that's what the computer the computer says. Um, if okay, here it should be this case. So if the connected edge connected vertices or the current vertices in the current vertices, if Underscore passed over.
go ahead and fix this just a little bit briefly. Um, if this case, if this is the case, if passed over vertices, I can. That's no reverse, it's a local variable. Yeah, it is. So, Just realizes also a bit of a oh wait a second oh my gosh I just completely realized if I forgot to do if passed over vertices dot contains uh, e underscore dot p one if this is equal to false then we do this because we can't just do it if it yeah. That's something I that is very important. I kind of realized like why is this thing not aligned with this one? And now I, I finally figured out why. Technically, if it goes to the end of this, I probably should return a false because, well, yeah, let's let's face it. Um, yeah, because it should manage to go through. It, it should manage to do this. If it manages to somehow go through this entire while loop without going to the endpoint, then it's most definitely likely that this is false. 100%, I'm going to say 100, with 100% 100 accuracy. So, yeah. And well, let's just make a bunch of vertices like this, make it much more simple, go like that. And let's do this. And lastly, we'll go ahead and do that. Why not, we'll make a loop here. And well, let's go ahead and make this one a lot more complicated. So let's say we do, we set this one to a directional. Can we also have a directional? Yeah, let's do that. And I will also set this one to directional. Um, so speaking. Oh, um, okay, let can go back. Okay, let me go ahead and switch this one around. Like, there we go. So it will hopefully now we can do a solve. So we'll do from A0 to all the way up to A2. This one, I believe, okay, we can go here, here, here. Yep, that is that should be a true. What? Okay. Okay, that's one of this. So therefore, if this is not the case, then it will go to this one. How is it not okay? So from A zero, it span it it's, it should go across. Yes, that's perfectly fine. Okay, first off, please tell me that when we switch the edge points, it actually does. Yeah, it does. Okay, it, it does. So that's perfect. That, that's, that's fine. So, 
we go from here to here it will go from once when we start here it will tr it will go this way and well and then we'll also go this way at least it should i th i think it should so over here let me check that let me just make sure that this is this logic makes sense so if the edge so there are currently there's we get this edge and this edge so let me look at this from another view so we currently are look so we currently we start from a0 we go we go from we go this edge or this edge it doesn't matter which one it, it it's either way it's still going to what it's going to get is that it gets this vertex and this vertex now um to, just to make a hundred percent sure if the vertex is at the starting point it doesn't matter that it's directional so that's the case and if we and well if the if the vertex on the other side which is definitely going to be this one if it's that if it contain and and the and you have it already passed over that vertex then we're going to connect we're going to add it to the connect vertices connected vertices and the passed over passed over vertices No, I'm just gonna get rid of these. I'm just gonna get rid of these because I'm not even sure if I trust those anymore. I'm just gonna let it do its entire algorithm. I'm, I'm just gonna let it do that. So passed over vertices dot contains, and we obviously need to check the endpoint. So we go ahead and do that. Hopefully now it'll work. Because it seems like this thing just explodes. What that or it seems like the algorithm doesn't seem to work whenever we just have some sort of loop with directional things i'm going to make a more simple kind of square shape oh my gosh all right and with that we're going to make these all directional another directional another directional and at last another directional now, what we want to do here is to go from A to A2. If my algorithm is to be believed... How is it false? Existing solution between these two points. How is it false? I don't get it. How is it false? How is it false? What? Okay, so the first thing it does is it starts with the at. Then it adds the current vertices to it. Then it makes the starting point as the, the current vertices. It, yeah, so it's this guy up. I don't, it just kind of, this thing just craps itself, I guess we can say. This thing, this, this algorithm just craps itself. It, it just craps itself when we decide to give it directional stuff. I don't understand why. Because it doesn't okay. If you're the fir if you're from the source, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Okay, so this one is going to make sense because it it should be the passed over vertices should be completely empty except for the first start point. 
You know what? Why am I why am I even doing this? I might as well do this. Debug dot debug dot log. We're gonna debug dot log underscore e dot p2 dot game object dot name. We're just going to do that. We're gonna debug dot log whenever we pass over a vertex. If for some odd reason it's just not working, then something something's wrong. Making sure that's not in the while loop. Okay, good. So yeah, um, make a triangle again. Let's just make a triangle so that way it's much more simple. Oh my gosh, please. All right, we'll go ahead and make these all directional. And of course, the last one. Solve mode, go from A to A1. It's still false. How is it false? How is it false? Well, I didn't change anything right, I'm smart. So, A0. A0. Do we need to clear it? Okay, we're going to do it like this instead. We're going to do it like this instead. Because I have a feeling now what's happening is that it's since it's clearing, since it's cleared, the while loop just kind of explodes and says, hey, it, or it's not that it, the, the while loop just basically it basically says oh hey the connected the thing is already is empty so therefore we can actually stop doing the loop but that's not what I'm trying to make it do I'm trying to actually have it do something else so with this what I'm going to do it now is to go to our solve we're going to go from a1 to a0 if this do, if this isn't the reason why. What's wrong with this thing? What's wrong with this thing? What is wrong with this thing? I'm not just, okay, I'm not, okay. Making sure, I'm ju just making sure. Just making ultra sure. Okay. This is the right, this is right. This is the starting point. So basically the, Okay, the endpoint is obviously going to be this one. The way it should actually still say true, but um, let's look at the log. So it goes to A, but it doesn't go to A0. Why is that? Okay, I'm I'm just go, I'm just going to have a int loop num equal to zero, and well, we're going to say at the end at the end of this, what we're going to say is at the end of this while loop, we're going to say loop num plus plus. And we oh, okay. And before we do that, we also need to. We, before we do that, we also need to do a debug dot log looped loop num times. We're gonna do that. And I'm I'm too bothered I'm too bothered to, I'm I'm not even going to bother to build it anymore I'm just going to go like this. So it should be like one and two, right? 
I believe I'm I have I believe I'm correct on this, right? Excuse me. So we go. It's currently zero. One. Two. All right. Let's go ahead and see. Loop loop three times. Wait a minute. What? Wait. What what did I even do? I didn't even do I didn't even add anything. What? What? I did what? I just added this loop number. What is it? What? I'm co what is this? Okay. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. What? It's true. Okay. It's it's yeah yeah. It's true. What? I, I I'm not blind, am I? I? I know I have glasses, but I, I'm not blind, am I? Right? I'm pretty sure I'm not blind because I swear it was not working. I swear I also made it in the correct loop. I'm pretty sure I had it in the correct loop as loop as well. So it's not that. All right. So. All right. Okay. Everything is exactly as I think it should be. We're going to go from A to A1. This is false. Did I just not save or something? Maybe I didn't. Maybe I just didn't save. <laughs> oh my gosh, I swear. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, so, with that, I think, I think, well, I'm not sure if this is exactly what I want the function to do. I'm actually completely sure that this is not exact. this is exactly what I don't want it to do right now. Because I have a feeling, I still have a feeling that this, whatever I did here, can actually still be used for the Dijkstra's algorithm, the, Di the Dijkstra function. Dice function. All right. So I guess I might as well try and see if I can integrate it and actually see if it will work. So we're going to, again, we're going to have a list. Okay, have a list. All right, we're going to have a list. The hardest part, okay, the hardest part is actually figuring out how to make the path, which is not going to be entirely ideal. Anyway, we're just and I ignore that for now because I just want to make the algorithm. I just want the algorithm to work. I just want to see if I can make this algorithm. So we're gonna have a list of vertices, of vertex. This one is going to be the. Actually, no. No, 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 no. This is not how it's gonna be. Let me check something in the vertex. Aha. Realize something. What we do, it, the Dijkstra's algorithm doesn't work as we thought it would. So Dijkstra's alg algorithm actually works. Um, we're just gonna completely ignore that for now. Um, let, let's go ahead and comment. Let's comment this one out. So this one is going to be uh, home. Dang it. Home. Dang it. Home. Yeah, that's how it does. Okay. So. What we're going to do here is have a vertex. This takes a vertex. And what this vertex is, is the current point. The current point. Now, in Dice's algorithm, this is exactly what it is. This is exactly what it's going to be. And what we have to do is set this to path solve dot vertex points zero. We're going to start it off like this. And let's just ignore the, all of those. Then I guess we can. Um, current point is equal to this. Now, we're again, again, we kind of, we're going to do something very interesting. We have a, we're going to have a list of past 
a list of vertex vertices. This one is going to be the pass. Again, we're going to call it passed over vertices. You go to a new list of vertex, obviously. And we're going to have a list of vertex, vertex, and this one is going to be called the connected vertice. Do I need it to be a list? Do I need to make it a list? I, I technically I don't think I need to. I don't think so. I'm just gonna I'm, I I don't I guess I don't need this list. Okay, I'm gonna go over. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> um, this while loop while loop basically says. Okay, I guess we might as well do it. We might as well copy it anyway. So we have a list of verdict. Vertex and this one is the connected vertices. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, this is equal to a new list of vertex. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. So connected vertices is equal to while the while connected vertices is greater than I'm messing up that count is greater than zero. We're obviously we obviously the first thing we need to do is to do passed over vertices dot add uh, um, current point again we have to do connected vertices dot add current point And obviously, the one thing that we need to do actually, we don't need to do this one. We don't need this one. We don't we don't need the you don't need this one. I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep it there for now because you never know when things go rough and give me a second. All right. Um, sorry about that. Um, my brain is exploding right now. Anyway, um, so I don't know why I'm suddenly saying I'm, I don't know why I'm just saying explosions everywhere. But I guess I might as well just say it because why not? You know, just an expression. Anyway, so yeah, we're connected vertices. While the count is greater than zero. Okay, never mind. This is, this is stupid. Um, <laughs> I just realized I still need to add the current point, otherwise, this while loop will never actually do anything. So yeah, that's I, I need to actually add it add it. Yeah. So now what we're gonna have to do is make a list, of course. And this one is going to be the new connected vertices this is going to be equal to a new list of vertex all right yeah okay Woo. okay here what we want to do now and just refer to here okay so We need a list. Basically, we need to make a list of edge of edge. This is going to be the connected edges. I'm gonna I'm just gonna call it current point current point edges. This is equal to uh, get connected edges, and we pass in the current point. All right, so with that, what we have to do now is the for each loop, for each edge, um, connect edge in current point 
edges. Okay. What we need to do is, again, we're going to have to do the same exact thing that we did with the, this one. Okay, so what we'll do is connect edge dot. If connect edge dot p1 is equal to the current point, and we have to do else if as well, the else if connect edge dot p2 is equal to current point, and we want to do connect edge dot directional is equal to false. Yes, yeah, so it's equal to, we have to make sure it's false. Or a cat on my roof, anyway. Sorry, give um Okay, anyway, I guess I'll go ahead and continue myself here. So yeah, um what I'm going to have to do now is to we're going to want yeah. Now I can't speak. What was I talking about anyway? I don't even remember what I was talking about anymore. So next edge p1 and the current is equal to the current point. Um right, we're um you basically eh. Okay, okay, okay. I need to look at this thing because okay. Okay. Um, passed over vertices is actually going to work slightly differently than, um, well, let's just say, uh, Okay, whatever. Um, this is going to work. A, uh, gosh, my brain. My brain is melting. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because it's one o'clock in the morning, but uh, my brain. I need to. I really want to get this done. Um, the passed over vertices is actually going to be a bit different than actually than how this works. Basically, what we have to do, instead of doing that, instead of checking if we already passed over the vertex, what we have to do now is to, in a sense, just run this function that we have down here, which is the set vertex values. Kind of does already handle some, quite a bit of stuff for us already. So first off, first off, we need to indicate which ver vertex we need to edit in. Give me a second here. All right. Next edge p two, and what you basically want to now what we want to do is take the current point dot minimum distance, and add it with the connect edge dot this dot value. Yeah, there we go. Then the new state will be vertex state dot temporary. Hold on a second. Let me make sure that some, let me make sure of something. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, okay, that does that already does the work for us in that sense. And then we're going to have to do it again for this guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> my brain, I'm sorry, my brain is kind of just exploding right now. Current point dot the current point minimum distance plus the connect edge. Hold on a second. Does the current point 
I think I need to actually do this. Um, the current point needs to obviously need to be a permanent spot by the by default. Um, now, um, something I'd okay. Something I want to test right now again is. The shortcuts that I the shortcuts that I added into a, into here a bit. So basically, what I want to do is check if the endpoint is equal to underscore e dot p two. We want to return a true automatically. And same thing here. We want to say if the endpoint is equal to underscore e dot p one. We want to return a true. And otherwise will return a otherwise will return a false. I want to test this one just to be sure. Because if it, if we can do that, we can actually save a lot of time. Um, instead of like you know having to go through the entire out every the entire graph just to you know do stuff. It would it actually is going to take up a lot less time so let's go ahead and test it it's true okay perfect now let's load up a load up a new graph let's do a the up test and basically if we go from b to a this one should be a false hopefully hopefully it's a false yes it is and well let me go ahead and make sure that we go from a to B. This one is obviously should be a true. Yep, perfect. All right, did exactly what we needed to. All right, with so with that, we're gonna what we're going to do now is actually check here if actually before we do that, we actually want to say if. Oh wait, no, 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 no. We don't. We don't want to do that. I just realized. If we do it right away, then it actually might not be the shortest distance. That's what Dijkstra's algorithm does. It goes through the entire graph to make sure that, in fact, the shortest distance is what it actually seems. Because technically, um, let's go to this thing. We could say we start at k and we go to j, but there is a chance that l h from k to l, then l to h, then h to j, is could be shorter than k to j, because that's why the, the there's a reason why there are values on the edges. Um, so yeah, there, it is possible that yes, there needs you need to go. You technically do need to go throughout the entire graph to actually make sure that this is true. I just realized that. Um, so unfortunately, we have to do some things. So um, we actually do need to do a bit of a check right here. If Actually, wait, no, we don't. I, th I think we don't. Because I think the, I think I just realized I, I was going to do check if the vertex state was permanent, and then I'll just skip over it. But then I realized that technically, um, that technically our good old buddy, the set vertex values, actually already does that here. So yeah, no need for extra code. So. Once we do that, now, now I'm trying to figure out what is this connected vertices. Um, what we're going to do is do a new connected vertices. New connected vertices dot add. We're going to add uh, connect edge dot p two. Then what we have to do with that after that is do pass over vertices dot add connect edge dot p2 then we're going to want to do this exact same thing for these guys let me go ahead and check that there's nothing else here and i guess we can go ahead and get rid of these because these debug logs because we don't need them anymore um, yeah it's exactly that and well now what we want to do is once we do this after we do all that, after we go through all the edges in from the current point, from the current the current point edge. After we go through all the current point edges, what we have to do now is again do a for each loop. 
So for each um, vertex, um, past vertex in past over vertices, basically what we want to do is one. We want to do one. We we just want to, we want to do one thing. Get the vertex with the minimum with the minimum thing. What is it? We want to get we want to basically set the new current vertex, the, the new current point. Actually, hold on a second. I can just do can I can instead of doing instead of doing this new connected ed this new connected vertices, what I could do instead is while the current the current point is not equal to null. How many lists do I need? Okay, anyway, um, so I kind of realized that. Um, let me let me go look at my this function. So it takes a list of floats. Okay, I guess we're gonna have to do a list of floats. This one are the min distances. And this is and well, yeah, this is going to be equal to a new list of float. What we have to do now is. We basically need to say if get distance is true. I really do not like this get distance name. I want it at getting distance, calculating distance, getting distance, anything. No, whatever, get distance. Okay, so what we have to do now is here. First off, we need to make sure if past. If past vertex dot v state is equal to vertex state dot temporary, not permanent, temporary, and we want to say past vertex dot um, get distance is equal to true. Yeah, because we don't want it. We don't. If it's a permanent, if it's a permanent uh, vertex, then we don't want to get it. You don't want to consider it. And but if and we also want to make sure that we're, it's not just like some random vertex that we haven't even touched upon yet. Otherwise, technically, technically, Dijkstra's algorithm says that if you haven't touched upon it, you're supposed to use an infinity, which I do not want to use. So I just decided to use this to get distance boolean instead of instead. So yeah. Anyway, let me make sure that my mic is not muted. Okay, not muted. Anyway, oh my gosh. So, if that's the case, then we're going to do min distances dot add. We're going to add um, as vertex dot minimum distance. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, uh, my brain, I'm sorry, my brain is exploding. That's the way it's gotta be. So anyway, we're gonna get the float. Which one is the the, the smallest distance? Smallest distance. Okay, I kind of realized something. In the, under the graph editor, if we want to set an edge value, we can't. We technically can't allow negatives. Yeah, or we can't allow negatives. So,
Um, how am I going to do this? Okay, so here, right here, I'm going to do if Okay, I guess I'll go ahead and rather than doing that, I'm going to go here if graph builder dot script dot edit edge about edit edge values we do one dot text and since this is an, an array. is equal to the negative character. You want to return. And we also want to do a notification.notify. Edge values cannot be negative. And we want to just do this for 25, 0.25 seconds. Again, we're going to do this. Technically, there should be no such thing as a zero either, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I, I don't want. I don't even want to bother with that anymore. There technically should not exist a zero, but I don't want to bother with it. So, yeah. And we're gonna have to do the same thing. Thank. Uh, never mind. I'm not gonna. I think. Wait. Hold on. I think. I believe that, okay, I hope I'm smart enough that our inner player command, we do our edit edge. Where is it? Our edit edge. Edit edge, edit edge, value, edit, edit edge. Edit edge value. It does this guy. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I have to be a bit more smart than that. I have to do this. If the new value is actually less than zero, we want to return. We also want to do a notification dot notify. Because what the heck is negative distance? Uh, there can be negative displacement, but not negative distance. Uh, distance is a scalar value, so it's technically a magnitude. So it's not actually going to have any direction because if you put a negative sign, there actually is a direction. So uh, you can't actually have that. Well, in like at least for distance, for something like distance, if you put a negative with the distance, technically it actually tells a direction. So that's why you cannot actually, that's why it can't be negative. So we're going to do uh, edge values cannot be negative. We're going to do it again with 0.25 seconds like that. I hope, I'm, I hope that's all the instances that we need. Wait a second. Wait a second. Close losses. Okay. I'm, good. I'm just going to go ahead and save and pretend like that never happened. Okay. I'm going to keep that open for now. So the float, the smallest distance is equal to u dot get minimum value. And then we pass in the min distances like so. And then again, we have to do another for each loop for each vertex past vertex in past over vertices if past vertex dot min dot has no past vertex dot min distance is equal to the smallest distance we want to set the current 
current point equal to the past vertex. And well, okay. So it's null. And new current new current point. So we're gonna set this to the current point. However, if it manages to go through this entire thing, all of the if it manages to go through all of this. And some and if the new if the new current if the new current point is exactly equal to the current point, then we're going to set the current point equal to null. Because the only reason why the new current point would be the same is that there is no that this thing is completely null. Yeah, that's the only reason why. And if if there if there are no if there are no vertices that actually meet this that meet this thing, actually wait a second. Do I do I no 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 do I really need this? I have a feeling I don't now. I have a feeling I'm just overthinking things. I'm feeling that my brain is exploding because it actually probably is the current point. Basically, we need to say if. If min distances dot count is equal to zero, let's no, let's just do less than or equal to zero because you never know. For some odd reason, there could be a negative value for all we care. If it's less than or equal to zero, what you have to say is banana. No. Okay, we're gonna say that we're gonna set the current point equal to, equal to null. And that is when our thing will break out of the loop. Otherwise, because if the minimum distance is, is zero, then obviously, well, if the minimum distance is, is, is completely zero, then well, let's just say that, uh, if, okay, if the min distance is a list is zero, that means that means that we managed to go through all of the past vertices and this thing was not sat and this if statement was not satisfied. So therefore there are all there are all the past vertices that you can get to within a connected within an interconnected graph that's not disconnected and whatnot. We'll say that hey. That hey, this is they're they're all permanent, and you've all gotten the distances to these vertices. Okay. Let me, let me go ahead and minimize some things because I have a feeling I'm just ex my brain I'm just exploding my brain even more further by having to look at all this other stuff that I might not need to look at. Okay, so it's almost two o'clock. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll go to bed when it's uh, I'll go to bed when it's two o'clock. <laughs> I need to go to bed soon. But okay, so. Calculated distance. If the if it's false, I'm questioning the need and the necessity of this boolean, like seriously, because we're not going through every single vertex in the graph. 
we're only going through the ones that we've passed through. So, does that make that Boolean completely useless? I have a feeling it does. Because I have a very slight feeling that I don't need it. Let me think about this logically. Okay, let's look at it through the eyes of a computer. So let's say that we start with from J. This is our starting point. It's our current point. And basically we get all the edges except this one. So we go to K and we go to N. Let's say, and we say that this one is a temporary and this one's also a temporary. V, J, K, and N are now in the past vertices, in the past over vertices. What we can do now is say that, what we can do now is say that, um, okay, what, what we can do here is that you go through J, K, and N, J, K, and N, and N, and check which one has the minimum distance. And then, again, it will spread from N, checking and updating. Yeah. I don't, okay, I, I, th I think it's official. I don't believe I need this thing anymore. Okay, so I have, I, you never know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get rid of them, just, you never, because you never know. Wow, okay, this just makes this if statement entire completely useless. Wow, okay, this is hard to figure out. Okay, if I'm gonna do all this. Wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. All right, we're, we're, we're gonna bring it back. We're bringing it back. We're bringing it, we're bringing it, we're bringing it back. I totally did not just reference a song there. We're bringing it, I, I, I mean, I, I just did, I didn't want to sing because I don't, no, I don't want to sing. And with that, um, let's go ahead and bring it back everything. Let's bring back all the, the, the yeah, just, just just casually bring back everything that I just somehow took out. Now I can't even remember where on earth these. Here. I, I could just use the control F, but I don't want to. I, yeah, technically, okay. I'm realizing that technically the get distance is very important because what will happen is that since the minimum distance is set to zero by default, what happens is that the solver algorithm would be unable to know that, hey, it would be unable to know that, um, that the this that the this, the calculated distance here is obviously, which is most likely hopefully not going to be zero, which is is going to be greater than zero, is going to just say hey this thing is not this thing the the distance is the 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 minimum current the current minimum distance is zero, so therefore I should just not even bother to set it to the calculated distance. Else if I could actually shorten this, but why don't I just do this? 
if calculated distance is less than the edit 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 vertex values dot minimum distance. Because if I'm honest with myself, that probably would just shorten this entire thing by quite a bit. And put it back so that way I can. Okay, that's not how that works. I'm gonna get you. All right. So yeah. If this is true, then yeah, we're gonna go ahead and check. Yeah, okay, so it does technically, it technically does have a purpose. It does have a purpose in life. And in death. Okay, no. Um, so let's just, again, let's just go ahead and completely ignore anything that might explode my brain. The check for solution is definitely not all the check for solution, not necessarily, not necessary to see. And well, yeah. Okay, I guess yeah, it's, it really is. Just, we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it there because, I mean, even though I'm very certain that past all the passed over vertices are going to have the set to true, I'm just going to do this just to make sure. Just to make sure, because you never know. Anyway, so once we go through this entire while loop, and somehow end up making Unity be like, what the heck? What we're going to do now. Um, I don't know what to, actually, I don't really know what to do. Because <laughs> technically, I think that's just the entire algorithm. I really think that's the entire algorithm. Because then, once we set this current point, we're going to go back to the start. And yeah, we're, we can get rid of this thing. This is going to be a pain to actually to do a bunch. This is going to be a pain to do a bunch of comments. All right. All right. All right. All right. All righty. All righty then. Okay, that is not a reference to something. So we're going to do a debug.log. Here, what I'm going to do. Okay. I guess what we need to do now is to check if. The, only, the way that we know that um, if passed if passed over if passed over vertices dot contains um, contains path solve dot vertex points one the false then we actually can actually do we could actually not do a notification dot notify there is no solution for path solve dot vertex points zero solution Um, two path solve vertex points one, and we're gonna have this display for like two seconds, cause oh. and yeah, we're just gonna return. Wow, huh? That Dijkstra's algorithm. It's quite a long. It's quite a long thing. Yeah, it, it's quite. It's quite long, but it works. And well, if, if, well, if we do manage to do this, then we're going to actually do, then I'm going to do else at debug dot 
log for now. Debug.log. The min minimum distance from that's all the vert, vert, vertex points. Come on, come on, vertex points zero. That game object dot name. Oh my gosh, please. Two path solve dot vertex points one dot game object dot name is path solve dot vertex points one dot min distance. Oh my gosh. The game object dot name just to be sure because I, I just I always just tend to do that because because I found that if we don't do that, you know, there is a chance that it might just completely misread what your refer what your reference is. It might just reference the script when I'm trying to actually reference the game object. I don't know. It, it, it happens the most when I do transforms. So yeah, anyway. So yeah, um I'm surprised that I already coded this. Like seriously. Okay, the harder the harder part that I'm going to have the one that I'm going to have a more difficult time doing is actually determining how to get the, determining the path. Cuz again, as I said in the last live stream, it doesn't mean anything if I find the minimum distance and I don't even know how to get there. I can tell my GPS, "Hey, I want to get to the to my destination in in the shortest traveling the shortest distance." But if my GPS doesn't tell me how to go there, then it's completely useless. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I that's why I'm doing stuff. Okay, so now I guess that means we're gonna we technically need to now hook up our path solver with the die stress algorithm. So in a sense, we have to do um, algorithm dot die stress. Die stress. Yep, that's it. We just technically need to do that, which is kind of surprising me. It, it's actually kind of scaring me, actually, more than surprising me because it's like, wow, am I really? There, there's no way. So shortest, is it, is it that one? Is it shortest paths? Yeah, it is shortest path solver. All right. Save before we actually do anything, because you never know. Okay, so yeah, you never know. So we're gonna make a more simple graph here. We're gonna make one that that has. We're gonna have a graph. Okay, we're gonna do this. This point to this point. 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 This one to this one. And just to make sure that I don't just get some, I'm going to make this a 1. I'm going to solve from A2 to A0. And well, I have to do quite a bit of editing. So um, this one's going to be a 1. I'm going to set this one to be a 3. And then this one will be a. We're going to set this to. Let's set it to 2. Wait, 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 what? Guess it doesn't matter anyway. Okay, we're not going to save yet, but I'll, I'll go ahead. I'm just not going to worry about it right now. Okay, we're going to go to, and then we're just going to keep this at one. However, I want to make this set to be a directional. And so on. So we're now going to solve from A2 to A0. All right. Crap. 
pray that I don't just freeze your knee. Three, two, one. I froze unity. <laughs> oh my gosh, I froze you. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Let me get rid of that. Okay, that means I messed up with the while loop. I messed up with the while loop, and well, we have to hope. Okay. This basically means that I I messed up with the while loop. Let's script dot and then int values. One dot length. It turns out the length is greater than zero. All right, so with that, we save that and we're just going to completely ignore it. So I am smart. I am smart because I forgot to actually set the current point. Whenever you set a current point, <laughs> you're supposed to make it, you're supposed to set it to a permanent state. That's why. <laughs> okay, I kind of realize that technically, I do not need to do this. I technically can just completely remove this. Yes, it, it, it's completely unnecessary. Okay. Now, um, let me go ahead and fix that. So technically, now we have to add a new. We have to add a new line here. Current point dot. Um, these these state is equal to vertex state dot permanent. And what we have to, again, we're going to, by default, we already set them to temporary, so that's completely fine. But what I forgot to do is that under here, we forgot to do um, current point dot v state dot is set equal to vertex state dot permanent. That's, that's the one, that's the reason why I completely forgot. That's something I completely forgot to do. And, let, and with the time, with a time incoming. Hopefully I can get this to work. So let's just build a very brief sort of graph. And we're going to do that as well. So this one is going to be a directional. I'll do it like that. We want to set its value to, so can, let's do 10. For this one, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a vertex here, but I want to do here is to make this one directional. All right, so this one is going to be a, let's just make this like a four or something. Can make this one for all I care. Then this one here. Okay, I want to build out another path here. This one is going to be a a three. So this one's going to be a four. This one I'm going to do a two. And I'm going to also do a three. Actually, let's go ahead and make this one a five. No, we want we want to set it to five. Here we go. Five. 
And this one is going to be a four. Now it's a little bit messy, but who cares? So we're going to go from A4 to A. And let's go ahead and solve for it. What? What is that? What are you referring to? You know it would help Unity. You know it would help if you actually told me what the list was. You know. Okay, we put we press the button. Get back on the list. U dot get minimum value. Wait a minute. So for algorithm. We'll do it like that. Hopefully that'll solve our issue. And you know what? I should probably stop making these compli this, these a little bit more complicated graphs because I'm trying to, I just need to test if it works first off. So I'm, I'm just gonna build a more simple kind of graph here. It's not gonna have any directional or anything like that. It's not gonna, it's just going to be a, some simple straight paths. And we're gonna, we're gonna add three paths. So what I'm gonna do here in the middle I'm going to make it the longest. I'm going to make it like 10. For this one, I want to make it like 2. However, this one is going to be a, a uh, 6. So that's an 8. However, this one, we're going to say that this one is a 5. However, this one is a, a 6. Let's do that. With that, let's go solve for the shortest path between A and A1. So hopefully what it will do is we'll, hopefully it will, it will pop out 8. Perfect. Okay. Yes. That's exactly what I needed to see. So let's go back to our edit and let's now... Let's now make this a directional thing. Let's switch it around. Hopefully now. Hopefully then it will just say 10. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna go from A to A1. It's 10, yes, 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 yes. Is it working? I don't know, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna also flop this round and hopefully my, the brain doesn't explode. A1, to A, from A to A1, and hopefully it says there's no solution. Yes! Yes! It gets the distance! Is that some fly in my room? Go away, fly. Go away. You know. Okay. Sorry, just some fly in my room. So, I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. It works! It works! Oh my gosh. I'm gonna switch this around just to make sure that the brain, that it's not just freaking out. Um. Okay, so with that, let's do it again from A to A1. Solve for the shortest path, please. Oh, sorry. Solve for the shortest path. Yes! Yes! It works. I think it works. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Should it be a two? Yes, now with that. Oh my gosh. With that, I have to say now 
Uh, okay, I want to test something. Okay, I just want to test one last thing. Um, if I make a disconnected graph, just random disconnected graph, does it actually say if I go from A to, let's say A2, does it say that there's a, there is a uh, there is no solution? Good. Okay, so I technically now I have a I technically have developed a I have developed the way to actually to actually check for to get that minimum distance. However. However, I should mention, I should mention now that, um, I should mention that, uh, I should mention that once again, this is only getting the distance. This does not at all, this does not at all show us how to get there. And that is the hardest part, I believe, of this program. Because as of right now, I do not know how to do that. Yeah, I currently do not know how I'm supposed to show the path. Because, well, mm, At least without like making, taking all possible, okay, without like, you know, starting from J and then I said, hey, I found the shortest path to G without having to go from like J to H to L and then, then there's also uh, J, H, L, K, you get it, you get the point. There are technically many, 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 many possible, many possible, there are a ton of possible paths that the player can take. And technically, some of them would loop forever. Yeah, so technically, the hard for me, the hardest part is figuring out how on earth do I is figuring out how on earth do I get the shortest path? How on earth do I do that? At most. As of now, the only thing I can see is that I start from the starting point, then I then yeah, I go branch out again. And then from there, I get what I do there from there is internet. Are you alive? I think you're alive. So we start okay, we start from we start from our we start from here as an example. We start from J. Then we branch out, and then we continue to branch out until we find what path gave me the minimum distance. Now it sounds to me it sounds very repetitive since I technically already managed to get the minimum distance from this one. But then again, I don't know. At most, what I can see is working backwards towards the start point. But then that would make it a little more, a bit more tricky. I'm not exactly sure. Actually, maybe working backwards could work. Um, let me. I might. Yeah, maybe working backwards. So I'm. I'm gonna keep a note for for myself. Working backwards might work. Working backwards is a possibility. So if we. Okay. Let me go ahead and write this down really quickly. So um, let me now make a new layer here. So let's say we want to find the. I'm gonna do like. Ah, oh gosh, we need a, We need more complicated graphs than this. Um, let's say that. Two, one, three, five, two, three, one, two. All right, so we're going to start from, we start from, we're going to do, what we're going to do is go from J all the way up to M. All right, so we're going to go from J, from J to M. So using the algorithm, using Dijkstra's algorithm, we find that there are, this one is a distance of five. However, doing this one, 
it's a four. So I'll take a B. Okay. So, using Dice's algorithm, what this would say that this K that the vertex uh, the vertex point K will have a minimum distance of four. It's permanent, obviously. A minimum distance of four. However, this one, a distance of three. Oh, dang it. Oh my gosh. Okay, then this one will have a minimum, then H will have a minimum distance of three. Oh no, it's not gonna have a minimum distance of three, it's gonna have a minimum distance of two. It's gonna be permanent, then L is gonna have a minimum distance of three. If you start from M, then work backwards. So we'll go here, and we'll branch out. So basically what it says is that, oh, okay. So it starts off from here. <laughs> this is why I needed a more complicated a more complicated graph just to make sure that um so just to make sure that like, you know, if I did, because like, for example, this one, what I was thinking is like, hey, this, that, since this one is less than four, we would obviously have to take this one, but then that's not the case. Okay. Two, three. Oh no, I didn't list a distance here. Uh, okay, what I want to do is, okay, this is what I want to do, make this a 4, 54, and minimum distance, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, so the minimum distance of this one is 5, and that's obviously a permanent, you don't need to worry about anything else, so, Assuming we start here, okay, so we go to all these, we get and we, what we'll do is we'll get the less, the one with the less. Well, so we'll first do this one. So we'll start here. However, we realize that, oh no, this is definitely not the solution. This is definitely, this one gives off a, This one gives a solution of six, so this is not the correct path. Let's see we'll, so what we'll do instead. And then we'll... Ah, this is not how, okay, this is definitely not how, this is definitely not how you can do that. I'm trying to brainstorm, like how do you do this? It's already 2.15 in the morning. Oh my gosh, I should really go to bed. But I need to think about this. My problem is determining whether or not 
My problem is like, how do I, if I branch off like a million, like a million times, how will I get back, back all the way back to this original vertex? That's my thing. That's my problem. I could branch off to, I'm, I'm okay with starting backwards, but if I branch off to one path and it's actually not the correct path, and that, but however, that path actually leads to a million other paths, like maybe something like this. Let, let's just pretend it does like this sort of path. However, we found that this is wrong. How do we actually backtrack? How do we actually backtrack back to the original and take the other path? Okay, so one thing, I, one rule I should probably note to myself is that in Dyson's theorem, you don't actually cross over a vertex more than once. So definitely that's going to come in handy. So. In a sense, And the hard, another hard part that I'm struggling to see how to work out is if there are multiple solutions. I'm not sure how to do multiple solutions as of now. There, because yeah, I could have if once again if I like made this a three, then this one would have a distance of five. But there is actually this path, assuming that you could actually take that path. And then there's also this path. And well, actually, let's just pretend that the minimum distance is six. And actually is six, because I somehow just broke the laws and went from like this. But the minimum distance here is six. How the distance here is also six. How do I actually differentiate? How do I select which one? This is why I'm, I'm having difficulties. In a sense, I guess what I have to do to, okay, for this one, too. So this one is now for the, this one is the, right neatly, this one is the get path from start from start to end vertices. So the first thing that we should note is that we work backwards. And what this means is start from the end vertex. Start from the end vertex. That's what that means. We're going to do it like we're just going to do it like that. So we start with the end vertex. And then, then after that, we, so there, we branch, what we do is branch out while also keeping, keeping track while also keeping track of the path. Could be like some string or whatever. And then if path 
distance matches matches the min distance to I'm trying to write fast here to and vertex I'm trying to write fast here draw say or we'll just call, we're just going to say save path as a possible solution. This is basically how we're going to draw the path. Because technically, we could have multiple, there are technically, could, there is a chance that multiple solutions could exist. And that is one that actually confuses me the most. So, yeah. Okay, anyway. It's 2.22. I said I wanted to end it off at 2 o'clock. <laughs> um, sleep deprivation. Okay, anyway. Well, I got time anyway, so. Well, I'm probably going to have to stop doing this because I've got to do some work eventually. I'm going to do some work eventually soon. Okay. Are you are you okay, Internet? Yes, you are. Technically, kind of. So we coded, so in a sense, we did code Diestro's algorithm. However, in the next one, we're going to have to code the code path display. Code path display. We've managed, we managed to code Diestro's algorithm to find the shortest path, have the shortest distance. However, we now need to draw the path. I should probably, that's probably a better name to call it. Code the path draw or like that. Let's do it like that. And well, let's just say that, uh, yeah, we managed to code Dystra's algorithm. And I remember learning just a few months ago what this algorithm was. And I'm not to say. I'm really proud that I've actually managed to do it. Oh my gosh, no, 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 why? Why would you? Okay, anyway. Okay, so we managed to, we managed to get, to get that thing done. And with that, we have a list, we have, we code Dystra's algorithm. We don't, we don't need the subgraphs anymore. Get out of here. You're useless. You're a useless function that I never even needed. I could probably also get rid of this. You know what? We're going to get rid of it. Okay. So that definitely shortened the script by quite a bit. Oh my gosh. Wow. Dystra's algorithm. I'm pretty sure that's how you say the name. Dystra's algorithm, oh my gosh. This here is Dystra's algorithm. This here is Dystra's algorithm. And well, that just shows how much we've managed to get done. I still have to do some other things. Not to, I don't. I still actually have to like you know. Um, I have to do things like make a title page, like things like that. So technically, I'm almost done, but there's definitely a lot of things to do. I need to also make like an instructions page, things like that. Because let's be let's face it, nobody's not, not nobody's gonna know how to do the <laughs> nobody's gonna know at all how on earth to do these. How on earth I how nobody's gonna know how to do the controls and whatnot and how to read and whatnot how to have, how to do everything. So I'm gonna obviously also when I finish making this I'm gonna make a tutorial on how to use this program and whatnot of course. 
and well, yeah, I can't believe that I managed to do it. 16 parts in, and we finally made the shortest path solver. We finally started on the, we finally um, made the first part of the, the shortest path solver. We're 16 parts in. Man. Oh my gosh, I'm almost done. I can't believe I'm almost done with this thing. Well, I might as well stop rambling, because again, I probably should go to bed. But yeah. So yeah, that's really about it for now. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed. Stay with my Discord. Oh, okay. So something I should mention. To know when I whenever I do these live streams, just you know, join the Discord. Cause yeah, Discord exists. I mean, I, I don't, whatever, you don't have to join it. I, I get it, 20, there are like 20 billion discords. Anyway, so I might, there, there probably is, I mean, there's definitely less than 20 billion, but because the population is less than that, but whatever. Or you never know, it could be 20 billion because maybe, I should stop talking about this. But yeah, if you ever want to get updated about when I'm going to stream, join my discord. I never thought I would say that, but okay. Um, anyway. So yeah, Dice's algorithm. Really about it for now, so thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed.